Good morning, sixth grade. Today we're going to be talking about, believe it or not, element families. Now, family is hopefully something that you guys deal with a lot. Right now, especially, a lot of you guys are in a house probably stuck with all of your families. Now, this might give you the time to actually look and see what makes your family different from other families and how other people know sometimes when you look when they look at you, they can be like, hey, you know what? Are you a part of that family? And you're like, how do people know that? I, I don't act anything like them. Well, it could be a couple things. It could be your hair. It could be the way you walk. The way you smile even might tip people off to being like, hey, are you a part of that family? Well, believe it or not, elements actually share this characteristic. There are certain parts and certain aspects of different elements that put them into different families. So let's talk about that a little bit here. First thing he says here, under element families, elements in different columns of the periodic table share different characteristics. Now, for the most part, just so you know, the main characteristic that these different elements in the columns show, in a column I'm outlining right here with my pointer, up and down is how they bond with different other elements. But another thing to know is this means that you can find out a lot about different elements without even seeing them in real life. If you were to know where they are on the periodic table. And so looking at this, we can assume that lithium right here would react similarly to sodium in a given situation because they're a part of the same element family. And so that's pretty cool to see and pretty cool to note there. Now let's keep on going. I'm going to introduce you to our first element family. These guys are called the alkali metals. Now if you look at the bottom left, you can see the different alkali metals here. They are highlighted in red for you. We have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and then finally francium. All of these share certain characteristics. And of course, they are the first column on the periodic table. And so now you can get a better idea of what it looks like. And you can see there's one, then two, then it skips a whole bunch. It goes to three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, well, it doesn't have eight here. It actually has zero. We'll talk about why that is later. But going on from here, sodium, otherwise known by its symbol Na, and potassium, also known by its symbol K, are the most popular ones. These are the ones you see the most. Now, even though alkali metals tend to explode randomly when in contact with water, they change completely when you combine them with different elements. This is very true. Compounds are completely different than the way the element would react. And so sodium which I have pictured in its purest form on the center of this PowerPoint slide here at the bottom, when it's thrown in water, reacts and explodes. And you can see that right here on the bottom right. It's causing an explosion. Now the explosion depends on how much you put in. Small amounts of sodium are still dangerous, but bigger amounts of sodium could cause a very big problem. Going on from there, at the bottom of the screen, you guys can now see some compounds made from alkali metals. The first one we're going to talk about here is going to be sodium chloride. It says common compounds with alkali metals are sodium chloride, otherwise known as table salt. And so if you were to take chlorine and you were to take sodium and you combine them together, it actually creates, when everything's said and done, table salt. And table salt is something that you guys use every day whether you know it or not. Whether you purposely put it on your food or it is put in your food before you actually eat it. More than positive, all of you guys have some sodium at least every day. Now the other thing on here is something called sodium hydroxide. Common names for this are lye, L-Y-E, or caustic soda. Now the word caustic actually has to deal with the idea of burning. And so, when lye is exposed to your raw skin, it actually burns. Which, 
Doesn't sound very good. Pure lye is actually used to drink clean drains. However, when lye is mixed with animal fats, it creates soap. And so at the bottom right, you can see that when you take lye and you mix it with animal fats or even plant fats, I discovered this earlier today when I looked it up, you can actually take plant fats like olive oil, mix it with lye, and you can create a type of soap as well. Very good for you. Now, the bottom right, you can see grandma's lye soap, and that's how they used to do it back in the day. They used to actually take lye that they would find, and then they would mix it with the animal fat, beef tallow, after they were done cooking, and it would create soap. And that soap would be used on their bodies, and it would clean them. So it's pretty cool there. That's why it's so interesting to see when you mix these things that you get a completely different product. This is why we tell you constantly, or you should be told constantly not to just randomly mix things in your cleaning cabinet because you might end up causing something terrible to happen. From here, we talk about the next family here, and they are alkali earth metals. Now these guys here are the second column of the periodic table. Most common ones are calcium and magnesium. And one thing you guys might have already figured out is that both calcium and magnesium are things they add to your food to help your body work better. Calcium is used for strong bones and magnesium is used for not just bones but other things as well. They are the most common ones you're going to come in contact with. Now at the bottom left, you actually see a compound, we actually see pure calcium. It's not the compound yet. Now, Calcium carbonate, or limestone, is the most common compound in the alkali earth metals. And so, calcium tends to combine with carbon. And when this happens, it creates limestone. On the bottom right of the screen here, you can see a slab of limestone. Now, the top coating of it usually tends to be this off-white type color. And then, if you were able to scrape that away, you can then see a brilliant white color. That's really cool. And there are a lot of islands, land masses and things like that, that are actually based on a foundation of limestone. Cave systems are actually limestone. And what happens is, the way the cave is formed is that water reacts to the limestone, and that limestone gets worn down and creates all those different cave things. And we talked about that a couple chapters ago. Now, our next family is the halogens. And the halogens are very interesting. We have two very different products in front of us here, but they still belong, the element belongs to the same family. Now, halogens are the seventh column on the periodic table. This means that if you were going to look almost to the end of the periodic table, that's where you would see them. Chlorine and fluorine are the most common elements. Chlorine is used to clean pools and it's also used in bleach and it's also used in mixtures to create certain plastics. PVC pipes actually have chlorine, elemental chlorine, mixed in with other chemicals and other elements to create that PVC that we use. And then from there we're going to talk about fluorine here. Now fluorine is very interesting and fluorine is actually found in most of your toothpaste. It has some fluorine in it, and the fluorine helps protect your teeth from different things that would make it wear away. On top of that, the fluorine in that toothpaste can actually be used and, you know, through different means and things like that to create non-stick cookware. And so any of your non-stick pans probably have a small coating of fluorine on them, and then you can take that same elemental fluorine, mix it with a couple things, and it helps to create really powerful lasers. And so fluorine has a lot of different uses. And it's still a part of the halogen family. And so these are our halogens here. We're going to go on talk about some other halogens, one of which is bromine. Now bromine was used in a mixture to actually develop film. But bromine by itself, its fumes are so bad, they're corrosive, which means they can actually eat away at and wear down different 
part of anything, really. Certain things are immune to it, I suppose, but bromine is known for having a very corrosive gas, which is why you can see in the bottom left, they have it concealed in a spherical container. You don't want that gas coming out. It can burn things. And then from there, talk about iodine. Now, iodine naturally, by itself, forms these crystals, but it goes through this process we like to call sublimation. This means it goes directly from a solid crystal to a gas when heated, very much like dry ice. Now, usually what would happen is that, let's take regular ice, for example, you heat that up, then you get liquid water. And then when you heat liquid water up, you will then get the gas, which is water vapor. However, with iodine, there is no liquid normally. You can't get that liquid in normal ways. When you heat up those solid crystals, it actually turns directly into that beautiful pinkish purple gas that you see on the right. And it's really, really cool. So that's what sublimation means. It goes directly from a solid to a gas. Iodine does that. And it is also a halogen. So these halogens are pretty interesting. And then we go on to our last family, which is the noble gases. Now, the noble gases are given their name because they are very unreactive. Just like royalty doesn't react to small things and peasant type stuff. Noble gases are very unreactive when they come in contact with other different elements. There was actually a time when noble gases were not even discovered because they were so unreactive. Because back in the day, chemistry was built around the idea of how different elements interact with each other. And so it was hard for people to actually find these noble gases. The most common noble gases that we know are helium, which are used, obviously, to fill up balloons, argon, which is another noble gas that we don't have time to really look into right now, and then finally, neon. Now, neon is very interesting. And you can see on the bottom right, I have a neon sign. Now, what they do with neon is they will fill a tube with the neon gas and another type of gas and that is what gives it its color. And so the color of the glass and also the gas are very, very useful. So when it comes to neon signs, they are very bright and people love them. And because people love neon signs, the gas neon is very popular. Now the cool part about this is you can run that electric current through neon to give it its bright color and it does not randomly explode because it's a noble gas. It's very unreactive. Now, that is where we are going to end today's lesson. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday and I wish you the best on your weekend. Take care and goodbye.